The Handbook for a Happy Cat. Speak their language, decode their quirks, and meet their needs, so they'll love you back. By Lisbeth Putz. Narrated by Lauren Ezzo. Preface the famous Dutch biologist Midas Deckers was once asked what he would say to his cat if he could ask her just one question. Deckers replied, Are you happy? He is not the only one to ponder this question. Every cat owner would like to have a happy cat in their home. How can you tell if a cat is happy? This, it turns out, is not a simple matter. We think of cats as beautiful, unique, elegant, and cuddly but they are also mysterious, unpredictable, and even absolutely incomprehensible. Cats are not very communicative. It is not for nothing that there are countless books about the enigma of cats, and the internet is full of stories about cats and their behavior. The answer is simple. You make a cat happy by getting to know him. Once you understand him better, you will know what your cat really needs in his day-to-day -day life. You might think that he will automatically be happy if you transform your house into a kiddie playground, keep the house at the ideal temperature, and buy the perfect collection of toys. However, it is much more important to look at your cat's needs from the perspective of his natural behavior. Lest we forget, cats will be cats. That is precisely what this book is about. How can you ensure that your cat can be herself? For this book, I took a deep dive into the literature, critically reading countless books and recent scientific articles. I have translated this information into practical, actionable tips and insights about your cat. Your cat's body language and senses, how to interact with your cat, or catechet, relationships between cats, and the importance of play are just a few of the topics this book covers. This book will answer many of your questions about your cat. I hope this book inspires you to look at your cat in a new light and to understand him even better. After all, you would do anything for your cat's well-being and happiness, wouldn't you? Part 1 What is a cat? 1. How does a cat perceive the world? A cat is a hunter. There is no doubt about that. The fact that she is a hunter determines her behavior, her appearance, and how she perceives the world. How she sees the world, in turn, determines how she reacts to you. Many misunderstandings between humans and cats arise because we do not actually have the foggiest idea how a cat perceives her surroundings. For us, sight is very important, and we communicate with others primarily by talking. For a cat, scent is paramount, and he communicates primarily with body language. You can understand your cat's behavior much better if you know how his senses work. Smell Smell is the most important sense for a cat, and a cat's sense of smell is much better than ours. Scientists don't know exactly how many different scents a cat can distinguish, but there must be thousands. A cat can smell in two different ways. Nose. The nose is used to detect scents in the environment, food, prey, other animals, and the like. A cat is so good at distinguishing between different smells that a recent article suggested cats could possibly be trained for search and rescue operations. Their smaller size and flexibility would allow cats access to places where a search-and-rescue dog can't go. Cats can probably also recognize chemical changes in their owner's bodies. Just think of cats who respond differently to a woman when she is pregnant. Mouth Apart from her nose, a cat has an additional scent organ to perceive pheromones, as opposed to other scents, called the vomeronasal organ, or... Jacobson's organ. It is a split in the roof of the mouth, directly behind the front teeth. Perhaps you've seen your cat sniff an object and then open her mouth, making a face as if disgusted. This is called the Fleming response, and it actually opens the vomeronasal organ. 
A cat will do this only when she is triggered by a particular smell, usually urine. Why cats have these two different olfactory systems is not yet 100% clear, but we know that a cat's vomeronasal organ is devoted exclusively to analyzing the smells of other cats. Pheromones Animals use pheromones to communicate with each other, or to evoke a specific reaction. Pheromones are species-specific. That is, cats can only detect the pheromones of other cats. A cat emits pheromones from scent glands located on her head, under the chin, near the cheeks, at the corners of the mouth, and near the ears, between her toes, around her anus, and where her back meets her tail. Urine also contains pheromones. Sniffing Cats often preface their interactions by sniffing each other, even if they have known one another a long time. That's why it's so important to help cats exchange smells as a first step when introducing a new cat to a group. Cats recognize each other by their sense. Communication Cats communicate through smell, for example, by rubbing their cheeks or head along an object, scratching things, leaving their poop in a conspicuous place, and, of course, by spraying. The advantage of leaving your scent somewhere is that the message remains recognizable for a few days, even when you are not around. This makes sense considering cats' evolution as solitary animals. Leaving your scent is a more effective way of communicating than, say, meowing. It's like posting an ad on the grocery store bulletin board. A cat in heat, for example, can make it clear that she's on the prowl for a fine feline. A tomcat can smell that his arch enemy two yards over is ill, and thus, perhaps vulnerable. Although cats live much more closely together today, by necessity, than they did thousands of years ago, scent is still their most important way to tell each other something. Evolutionary changes don't happen very fast. Hearing. A cat's ears are extraordinary. The triangular outer ear, or pinna, and the ridged inner ear function together as a type of complex amplifier. A cat can move her two ears independently and turn them nearly 180 degrees, enabling her to better locate her prey. Unsurprisingly, cats have a much keener sense of hearing than we do. A cat's range, 10.5 octaves, versus a human's 9.3 octaves, is the largest of any mammals. That might not seem like much more, but the difference lies in the sounds at the top and the bottom of the spectrum, which we can't hear. The high frequencies in the ultrasonic range are particularly interesting. A cat can hear bats clicking and the high-pitched squeaking of mice, their natural prey. Thanks to her amplifiers, a cat can also hear the soft, rustling noises of a mouse hidden in the grass. The drawback is that cats experience loud noises much more intensely than we do. It's no wonder that so many cats are terribly frightened by fireworks. Vision A cat's eyes are relatively large in proportion to its head. This has one big disadvantage— namely, that they are harder to focus. Objects within about one foot of her nose are fuzzy to a cat. Objects farther away than 18 feet or so are also blurry. A cat doesn't need to see prey that far away. And because a cat does not see well close up, she uses her whiskers when catching prey. A cat's eyes also adapt to her environment. Cats who grow up indoors are often nearsighted, whereas outdoor cats are usually a bit farsighted. An outdoor cat catches many small prey animals, mice, birds, every day, so she sets out multiple times a day to hunt. She does this in broad daylight as well as at dusk and dawn, which requires some special adaptations. At dusk, a cat's pupils widen so they can absorb extra light. In addition, cats have a special layer behind the retina the tapetum lucidum, that reflects light. You will see this light up, for example, when a cat looks into a car's headlights at night. This adaptation helps the cat make the most of a small amount of light. A cat can't see a thing when it is completely dark. There always has to be a source of light.